There's a couple of really easy things you can do as you get a little bit up in age to make it a whole heck of a lot easier to keep that distance and be as stress-free on the body. Now, number one is if you're very young and flexible and maybe you're just hyper flexible in, in general, which I'm not. I've never been able to swing this way even when I was 18 years old. But some players that have tons and tons of flexibility can keep their knees flexed, can keep both knees facing forward, and still get an amazing shoulder turn. I cannot. I'm going to have to do something a little different to get a great shoulder turn. That's why you see some of the guys on the PGA Tour that are just kind of superhuman, to be honest, make get into positions where this left arm is perfectly locked straight. They're perfectly in all these angles and they look like they're completely relaxed. Well, it just makes me want to punch them in the face because I wish I could be able to do that so bad. So we're going to talk about for us mere mortals, what we have to do. Well, number one starts with the knees, like I talked about, and specifically the right knee is going to have to straighten or the right hip is going to have to come back. I'm going to have to let this move a little bit. Like I said, if you're super flexible, you may be able to keep this perfectly still and have this huge backswing, but I simply can't do that. If I want to rotate enough in the backswing, I have to let that right leg move a little bit more. Same thing with the left knee. It needs to go ahead and kick forward a little bit, kind of this direction. Almost imagine that there's a little string tied to your kneecap and that string goes down to the golf ball and there's a little tiny person on there pulling your knee toward the golf ball in the backswing. That's the direction you should feel like it goes. So it's moving this way toward the golf ball as this knee goes back that really frees up the body. You should feel like your feet are moving a little bit as that's happening. So it's okay for the heels and the toes to come off the ground just a little tiny bit as you swing. And if I do this correctly, it should look something like this. Right now I've really freed that up and I can carry on a very comfortable conversation and still get a 90 degree shoulder turn. Now that is a game changer for most players. You free up the knees, it frees up the hips, and then you free up the turn in the backswing. Now, the second piece of this is gonna be the shoulders. Now, I want you to put a club across your shoulders at the top like this, and you can imagine that this would be rotating level with the ground. If I was a helicopter blades, it'd be just like this, level with the ground. And as I start to tilt forward in the golf swing, instead of being level with the ground, it's gonna be at a bit of an angle. So you can imagine this is level. As I tilt down in my golf posture, there's gonna be some angle here. Now, if you're very flexible, you can really get that angle being much more vertical. You look at a guy like a Justin Thomas, again, one of these very flexible players. And as he's coming through contact, you'll see the shoulders are almost vertical like this as he releases the golf club in his follow through. Now that's a young man's game there. That's just not gonna be possible as you get up in age, not possible for me either. So I want you to feel like when you rotate, get those shoulders a little bit more level so if there's a range, this is perfectly level, that's too level, we don't wanna be there. If this is pointing, the, my club's pointing maybe four or five, six feet outside the golf ball, that's a pretty good angle. If I go more than that and try to put, point the club all the way down to the golf ball, again, you just have to be so flexible to do that, not that realistic for most players. So imagine that plane of glass is kinda of angled five or six feet outside the golf ball there, and as I rotate back and through, it's just a very gentle angle like this, it's not extremely steep. Now, when that happens, as I rotate more level with my shoulders, it means less side bend. It means I don't have to bend this much in the backswing going back. It means I come through, I don't have to bend as much this way in the follow through coming through. But it's gonna be important to shallow out the club, get the club from the inside here and get some good shaft lane that I have to let the arms come down more. You see, if I, if I imagine my shoulders are tilted way down like this, so I'm really in side bend. If I go ahead and hit this golf ball from a lot of side bend angle, I'm like this angle, then my arms are in line with my shoulders more. So my arms are swinging more this way, parallel with my shoulders, and I'm tilting that whole thing way down to get to the golf ball. If I'm only tilted a little bit with my shoulders, that makes it even more important to shallow out that club and get it from the inside, and to feel like my hands come down close to my legs in my downswing. The last thing I wanna do is have level shoulders, have my hands up here, I'm gonna really be raising up out of my posture. I wanna make sure that if I'm a little more level with my shoulders, 
I'm shallow and I get my hands almost what feels like by my knees as I swing back and through. So loosen up the knees, level out the shoulders. Just make sure you really shallow out this club and get the hands low through impact or you're gonna be coming up out of your posture too much. You're really just gonna hit not the best quality shots. All right, so let's go ahead and give it a whirl. There we go, hit that one nice and solid. Nice little draw. I think I might have to incorporate it in my, my own game. I had a six iron there, 200 yards carry. I think just freeing up that body a little bit, even for me, I'd probably gotten a little too much in trying to stay down and just not that flexible. When I do it this way, it's just a whole heck of a lot easier. Now, like I mentioned before, what's really important there is we have to start the downswing from a shallow angle. Most players start their downswing and the club does this. It gets way too steep and that's all in your transition. Now I'm gonna play a preview of a video that's gonna show you how to get rid of that. We're gonna get that club shallowed out and it has to do with that very first starting down and you almost might feel like you're ringing a bell if you're doing this incorrectly. Like I'm gonna be pulling down and ringing a bell. I wanna play a preview of that video here in a second. If you wanna see the whole thing, all you gotta do is go ahead and click on one of the cards that pops up in your screen. If you don't see that, don't worry. Go down to the description below. There'll be a link in there and it'll give you instant access to it. So let's get that club shallowed out. Let's pair it up with these easy body movements that we went over today. And you're gonna be playing some daggone good golf. Let's go and get started. Now the bottom line is that if you pull this club down to ring that bell or pull the hands more from the inside, what's gonna happen is you start to rush your downswing from that pulling and that can throw off your sequence. And we all know that once your sequence gets off, that is gonna be the root cause of all your problems. Now, maybe you're being out driven way too often or you're terribly inconsistent with your strikes. Some of your shots are heavy, some of them are thin, some of them are off the toe, and then the next ones are way off the heel. Now you end up way over in the trees, you're in the tall grass, or maybe even the hazards all day long, and it really comes down to this. Clay, how in the heck do we fix it? Well, there's some good news. Well, there's only two things that you need to learn. First, you need to learn to shallow the club rather than pulling the hands down and getting the shaft in the steep position. You see, there's another way that the pros do this, and once you start to get that club on the shallower plane, more from the inside, then you pair that up with the right way to square the club face. And once you put these two things together, everything starts to fit in your swing. Now, your buddies will start to get a little bit jealous because you'll start hitting solid, longer drives, time after time, and round after round. Now, I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the E-slot technique. Let's walk through exactly how to do it. So here's what I want you to do. Go ahead and take a swing to the top and get in a really good position. I want you to feel like your weight is mostly shifted to your right side and that your hips and shoulders are nice and free. I don't wanna be locked up here. I want my knees to move, my hips to move, and that's gonna allow me to swing my shoulders very nicely. Now, one thing that most people get wrong when they swing to the top is they don't get this tilt away from the target. So instead of being straight up and down or leaning to the left, I wanna be slightly tilted away in what I call the stable fluid spine in my top speed golf system. Okay, so now that you're at this great position at the top of the swing, what I want you to do is instead of pulling those arms straight down or ringing the bell, that's gonna get the club shaft steep and get this elbow kind of flapping behind your body. I want you to do something very specific. I want you to take the tip of your elbow and move it in a specific way. Now, not this small bone on the inside of your elbow, but I want it to be right here at the tip. And here's what I want you to do. 